This week, Mayor Brandon Scott and city leaders unveiled their squeegee task force recommendations to help bring an end to the activity on Baltimore streets. And that plan includes an initiative that's similar to earn and learn. 100 squeegee workers will be paid $250 a month for a year not to engage in the activity, but to do so they must enroll in training, go back to school or find transitional employment. It allows for designated squeegee zones away from the city's busiest intersections and six areas where panhandling will not be allowed in areas deemed high traffic zones. Meantime, outgoing Governor Larry Hogan says he is not impressed at all with the plan. That sounds completely absurd and ridiculous to me. Uh, you know, we need uh, crackdowns, not handouts. It's not panhandling and uh, it's not standing on the corner asking for money. It's like stopping cars, breaking windshields, bending their windshield wipers and stealing money and threatening people. And it's a huge problem for the city when people don't feel safe coming in there anymore. And Mayor Brandon Scott is joining us live this morning. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Jen. You're welcome. So first of all, what is your reaction to the governor's comments? Well, listen, the governor's a lame duck. He's on his way out. The only governor that matters to me is Westmore. Uh, this governor has proven to not have a true understanding of issues. Uh, when you just blatantly say that anybody that's squeezy is engaging in illegal activity, you don't understand. And if we wanted a crackdown, we should have had a crackdown on poverty, uh, which, which the governor had a lot of time to do, right? If we wanted a crackdown on improving Baltimore City, we wouldn't have walked away from a billion dollars that would have created economic development from a new subway line that they gave the money back to. It's unfortunate that the governor just goes back to these Republican dog whistles because he wants to run for whatever office he wants to run for now. Uh, but what we've seen in this collaborative is all of us come together business community, uh, philanthropic community, government, law enforcement, people who understand the Constitution and know that squeegee is panhandling. Uh, the, gov the governor is not, the outgoing governor is not a member of the Supreme Court. He is not someone who, who understands the law. We know what the law is and the law of the land. And Mayor, part of the plan involves hiring or repurposing existing city employees as service navigators. How's that going to work and what will they be doing? Yeah, listen, we, this is work that we do a, a lot of already. And I want to, again, thank everybody on the collaborative who talked about all the 18 recommendations that go acro across su areas, support services, accountability or enforcement and governments and operations. Uh, but we do this work now through the African-American Male Engagement Office, going out there, making sure that we let these young women and men know uh, that there's another way of uh, those folks are out there engaged. They'll be paid to do that as they do with their work now, making sure that we can move uh, these young people into other ways of life without uh, criminalizing them unless absolutely necessary, doing it the right way, the way that we all agreed upon is the right way to attack an issue uh, that has existed longer than I've been breathing. We've been hearing one of the biggest criticisms of the plan is is paying people not to squeegee, not to break the law, really. And some are wondering sort of what's next, maybe not paying people not to carjack or burglarize. And, and I know that there there is a difference there. But what do you think about that? And, and where's the money going to come from for that program? A couple of things. I think people are just taking uh, a particular station, not WBLTV, who does responsible journalism, took that one piece and ran it and made it this big uh, racist dog whistle because that's what that station does. This is not paying people uh, just to pay them. This is not guaranteed income, which we do have in Baltimore and a small for a small set of young families. This is like an apprenticeship. Uh, when you come as an apprentice who is working, I don't care if you're an electrician, I don't care if you're someone working as a technician for H HVAC, you get paid, right? Anytime you have that. We have apprenticeships in the police department. They're called cadets. We pay them $30,000 a year to learn and earn. And that's why we call it learn and earn. Folks who don't understand that are literally just pulling back to what we see happen in this, in this city, in this country a lot. And that's the blatant racism. Like I said the other day, we are not going to go into a place where we're going to say poverty is okay as long as certain folks don't have to see it and don't have to be uncomfortable in seeing it. This is not paying people just to pay, pay them. This is to get these young people who are doing this because they have to provide financial support for their families or in some cases 
all the breadwinner to get them into a long term career, which they can actually uh, uh, work for their families and not squeegee. Well, Mayor, also, you have a new lineup, a new team that you're going to be working with, the new city state's attorney, Ivan Bates, and a new governor. What kind of conversations have you guys had about the future of Baltimore? This is the, the I got my Christmas gifts early uh, in, in, the, in the new state's attorney and the new governor, both. Uh, I am so excited to work with both of them. You know, I've been talking with them both for quite a long time. I've known them both for quite a long time. They're both friends of mine. I've been meeting with the, the incoming state's attorney. We talked about this squeegee collaborative. As you saw him put out a statement the other day that he is supportive of it because we've had that collaboration. Talking to uh, Governor Moore about how we can really start to work together in true partnership to deal with issues around public safety. Because folks have heard me say this before, uh, I restarted the criminal justice coordinator with the support of Governor Hogan, but now to have a deep partner in Westmore, Governor Westmore, where we're going to work to fix things. You hear him talk about how uh, parole and probation has been underfunded and understaffed and supporting those people that do great work. How we can figure out with our in income and state's attorney why even though this police department is making record numbers of gun arrests, we continue to see those people come back out, which is something that we can work in partnership to fix every single part of the criminal justice system. Because there's one thing that I control as the mayor, that's the police department. The state's attorney controls uh, what cases we're going to take and how we're going to prosecute them. The rest of it falls underneath Governor Moore. And I know he, unlike uh, our Karen Governor will be a true partner, a deep partner in fixing that work, not just using dog whistles and using the city as talking points. All right, let's switch topics entirely here. Let's talk about your new collaboration with DTLR and Air Force Ones. Yeah, listen, uh, everybody knows the mayor doesn't wear Nike. I w I'm an Under Armour person. There's no <laughs> secret about that. Everyone knows there's one exception. Baltimore has this deep connection with the Air Force One. Everyone thinks that Nelly in St. Louis saved the Air Force One with the song. No, we all know that it was saved here. Nike knows it was saved here because our community kept that shoe going. So uh, DTLR, who is a great partner and a great business here in Baltimore, who does so much for our city, asked me, a bunch of other uh, Baltimoreans, Kevin Lyles, DJ Quicksilver, some of the young folks to be a part of this campaign to showcase that history and honor the history of that shoe, which is why I did it to support downtown locker room so that we can let people know and show Baltimore in a different light. Yes, we are an Under Armour city. Uh, we, you know, the mayor wears Under Armour all day, but we have this deep connection to that one particular shoe because it means so much to the culture and the fabric of the city. And I think the, the DTLR did a great job with that. I, I'm not a sneakerhead, and the only reason I even know that phrase is because my daughter is one, and she loves Air Force Ones. So what <laughs> what colors are we talking about here? Like, what, g give us an example. So this, this is Baltimore. We we historically been all white. You might catch us in a black That's on my black. That's go-to. <laughs> but all the, all the extra colors, you won't really find that. You know, even the ones that they made in this case are white with a green check. They look, they look decent, but... Historically, Baltimoreans have only done all white or all black. I but just now, the mom and me can't yeah. take that. Like it's too dirty. Like it's gonna get dirty. Oh, no, you don't get your you, you don't get your Air Force Ones dirty. dirty. Oh, okay, you so don't get them dirty and you don't get them creased. Any, any tennis shoe dirty. I have a particular toothbrush that I use to clean off my my, my many many pairs of Under Armour tennis shoes. Chat, Ch our Mr. floor director is like, he's, he's a great, and I know the crease because the second my daughter gets a crease in those shoes, oh, she's not having it. She's like Googling what to do. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love it's it. a culture of its own. <laughs> All right, Mr. Mayor, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you.